Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain misunderstanding. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the misunderstanding that happens in Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's one of the things I really hate that really grinds my gears, right? It really does grind my gears. With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. Before I begin, look in front of you. In front of you, you can see two cards, Vanity's Emptiness and Polarization. Now, when Vanity's Emptiness came out, there was a ruling issue at YCS. Yes, you guessed it, a ruling issue. Before we get to that so-called ruling issue, let's uh, first of all summarize these two cards effects. Vanity's Emptiness clearly states here, neither player can special summon monsters if a card is sent from the deck or the field to your graveyard, destroy this card. And as we know, Polymerization is a form of special summoning. That's what happens now! So what was the ruling that was applied in the YCS? That apparently Polymerization f special summons from the hand and means those materials go to the graveyard. So, vanity, so you are able to special summon. Wait a minute. That can't be right. Are you serious? Yes, um, yes. This is something that has actually happened. Are you serious? And it definitely sent me crazy. I was extremely annoyed when I heard, Fuck this shit. I'm getting out of here. This happened in this space. This is one of the things that really does annoy me about this game, where there are times when effects are just made up by people, or is it by judges? When comprehension and misunderstandings, there's no room for interpretation for them, where cards clearly state you cannot special summon, yet you are able to still special summon? That doesn't make sense to me. I find this rather odd. That can't be right. And from now onwards, I'm going to call this the vanity logic, right? Named after this example that's happened in our ICS at the time of Vanity's Emptiness release. This was a thing that did exist. Vanity's Emptiness is now banned. Maybe that's the reason why it got banned, because it just caused a lot of ruling issues, which we shouldn't have had ruling issues to begin with. Facts. But there you go, right? It's definitely something that grinds my gears and I will fight anyone who gives me such sort of vanity logic in Yu-Gi-Oh! ever again. Let's move on to the next example as we see more egregious examples of this vanity logic. On this next slide, on this next thing you can see in front of you, you can see two cards. The Weather Painter, Cloud and Skill Drain. So Weather Painters have this ability that they're able to special summon themselves from the Banish Zone. You can see this clause in this card and this monster and you, you can assume this is a clause that's on all the Weather Painter monsters. Now that in itself, there's no problem with this. My issue comes about is that when this is ruled by a lot of players, when this card gets was released at the time and even now it still gets ruled this way, that you are able to activate effects of weather painters when they're on the field while skill drain is up. You can't just make up your uh, rules. And I'm like, yo, something's very wrong here. Something has gone offery, offery, topsy turvy. One moment. I need to look up this nonsense. Is there something I'm not understanding here? Let's first of all look at skill drain. Skill drain states here that you pay 1,000 and negate the effects of all face-up monsters while they're face-up on the field. And if I'm not wrong, Weather Painters will be face-up on the field when Skill Drain is up. So you should not be able to activate Weather Painters' effects. Yet for some ungodly reason, you're able to activate Weather Painters' effects? Now, Weather Painters state that when they're banished, which means they're not on the field, you're able to activate the effects. That makes sense because they're not on the field, they're in the banishment. Let's not call it banished, banishment, as Konami has now given banish the banished zone an official title, calling it banishment. Anyways, so 
Monsters, when they're in the banishment, as with weather painters, are able to be activated fangs and push some of them back. So this is something again that really pisses me off. That you have you have effects here that are clearly stated, especially with skill drain, that you're not able to do this, right? It clearly states on the card you cannot special you cannot activate effects of monsters on the field, yet you're somehow still able to activate effects of monsters on the field because they're weather painters. I find that extremely weird. What the hell does that even mean? I think it did get clarified in some rulings before, but this is one of those things that it shouldn't have come up to begin with. This is one of my pet peeves and one of the things that really annoys me about this game sometimes, where these are sort of rulings that should not come up to begin with. Cards have the effects clearly stated on them. Just follow instructions, guys. Follow instructions. There is no need for misunderstanding effects. When effects are clearly stated here that you cannot do something, yes, it means you cannot do something. It Keep it short. Keep it simple. It doesn't give you the right to just play around and just do all manners of nonsense. No. You can't do that. <sighs> Anyways, let's move on to another example that caused another crazy issue in this game. Oh, dear Lord, help me. Okay, as you can see in front of you, we have two cards again. We have the spell card Darkness Approaches, and we have Decode Toker. Now, when, Link f when Links first were introduced in the game, which was in early 2017, the card Darkness Approaches was talked about by the community. But before we get to Darkness Approaches, let's get to the fact that when links were explained to us by Konami with an official video and everything that links have, as you can see with the Link Monster Deco Talker, which was the example we were given, that links do not have defense points. And we were told specifically by Konami, and it was put in the rule books, that link monsters cannot go to defense mode because they have no defense points they have link numbers instead and are the only monsters in the game that are stuck in perpetual attack mode okay this was spe specifically told to us by konami it was put in rule books right so there was clearly and we were told sp specifically that there was no way that these cards would go to defense mode believe it yet we had a card like this, Darkness Approaches. So Darkness Approaches is an old card. As you can see there, it states, discard two cards from your hand, select one face-up monster, and change it to face down defense position. Now, for all intents and purposes, a lot of players in the community thought that you could use Darkness Approaches on Lynx, when it was clearly stated that Lynx do not have defense points, which therefore means they cannot go to defense mode. Which also means, as by proxy, you cannot put them to face down defense position. Can you please for one moment choose the thing in between your ears? It got so bad that we had to have a ruling from Konami. Granted, Konami gave us a proper ruling and they did give an explanation. Thanks for that, by the way. A lengthy explanation we can see on, their, on the official website. But this is something, again, that I, for me, made me very annoyed. This was something that was no fault for Konami. They explained to us how cards work. They explained to us the mechanic, how it worked, what you can do with it, what you can't do with it. There was no room for misinterpretation, no room for misunderstanding. Yet why are, were we still having a misunderstanding of this level? To me, it made no damn sense. Okay, these are the things that really annoy me sometimes about you and about is it about the community i don't know is it about the community is it about how we understand things <sighs> who knows but these are the sort of things that really annoy me about Yu Gi Oh sometimes when m uh, majority of our player base ha see the effects on cards right it is clearly stated on the cards it's written in plain english simple comprehension and then you start making up effects on cards which don't exist like, for example, uh, I talked about, like, with um, the vanity logic, as we call it, with vanity, as I call it, vanity's emptiness and polymerization, 
right? So Valley's Emptiness clearly states there that you cannot, uh, neither player can special summon. So with that simple statement there, that means that yes, as it states, neither player can special summon. That's the activation condition that has been set and has been fulfilled. Now, unless that activation condition is broken by sending a card from the deck or field to the graveyard, then this card gets destroyed, which hasn't happened at this point, you should not be able to activate the spell card polymerization because polymerization is a form of special summoning, which means it should not work. That's how, that's just the way things work. It's plain and simple. And that's all I've got to say really about this matter. Let's head on to the conclusion. So what have I got to say about this? When it comes to misunderstandings, I hate them a lot in Yu-Gi-Oh! and I feel they shouldn't really exist. It's like I always like to say like common sense is not so common in life and I can definitely see it here in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think this to me is what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! so complicated. It's not the rules, it's not the, the way Konami words things, it's not how people talk. It's the fact that things are written clearly for everyone to understand, as I've stated in this video. But then misunderstandings just come out of nowhere and for simply no reason. The vanity logic, as I like to call it, is more than just logic. It's a way of life and a way of where common sense is lacking in our lives that we don't apply it anywhere. And it's something which I'd like to see gone in the community and um, possibly everyone else to not um, do this, use this sort of logic when playing Yu-Gi-Oh! If you follow the instructions on what a Yu-Gi-Oh! card says, says, read what it says, follow the instructions of what it says, then 90% of Yu-Gi-Oh! that you play will be alright and will be relatively simple. Sure, there may be that 10% or that 1% that eludes you, but for the most part, Yu-Gi-Oh! is only complicated, in my opinion, if you make it complicated. If you're going to be making up effects and not even um, understanding the card or reading the card that is in front of you or having a general sense of what the effect of a card is, then, well, frankly, it, the game's going to be 10 times difficult if you're going to do that. There are ways of reading cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! as I put on my channel. You can speed read, you can uh, follow the keywords or keywords on a card, things like that. There are many ways to help you to read uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You don't have to suffer in silence. After all, I'm here. And that's all I've got to say when it comes to misunderstandings. There are things which can be improved upon. There are things which, as a player base, as a community, we don't need to fall into this trap. Just follow the principles, as I've said, of finding the activation condition on a card, and in general, reading a card becomes, Yu-Gi-Oh card becomes way faster, way easier, and there's going to be lack of confusion here. And that's all I've got, and that's all I've got to say about this matter. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer Becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master, my fate, right, is in your hands.